Kentucky Kingdom has been a staple in the Louisville metro area for over 30 years now. Many people don't realize that in 1987, the park opened with only 13 acres. Many people complained of the size of the park and after only one year, the park was bankrupt. Then in 1989, Ed Hart came forward with his team backed by the Bank of Canada. Ed Hart was kind of hesitant because of the failure of the park in 1987. He was able to negotiate the state fair board to lease an additional 13 acres. That obviously would double the park size to 26 acres. Also, vendors that were still owed money were paid in full. When the old park closed, all the attractions were removed except for one roller coaster. The Star Chaser Indoor Roller Coaster, the park's main attraction, had remained on site at the amusement park, allowing Hart to purchase it back. Additionally, new rides were added, including Bluebeard's Bounty, the Enterprise, Whirling Dervish, later renamed Breakdance, and the Vampire Roller Coaster. The park would have 2,000 people on opening day in 1990 and be declared a success. The end of the 1990 season, the park had an attendance of only 130,000, and by 1997, the park had recorded 1.2 million guests. On September 26, 1997, the park was sold to Premier Rides for $64 million. The first Ed Hart era was considered a success, having turned the park from nothing into something. Premier Parks would then purchase Six Flags from Time Warner in April of 1998. The park's name would change over to Six Flags Kentucky Kingdom and operate from 1998 to 2010 under the same name before Six Flags would declare bankruptcy and officially close Kentucky Kingdom. The State Fair Board was able to retain 20 acres from the Six Flags land, so most things on the property would remain besides some rides and coasters at the fairground allowed to be relocated. Then in 2010, Ed Hart would attempt to bring back the park for a 2011 opening, but that fell apart and the park looked like it would just sit there. Then in 2012, the owners of Holiday World in nearby Santa Claus, Indiana announced they would purchase and revive the park. They would rename it Bluegrass Boardwalk. However, that deal as well fell apart. In August of 2012, Ed Hart would come forward once again with a proposal with the Kentucky Kingdom Redevelopment Company. On October 19th, Hart said the company planned to invest $120 million, using $50 million to reopen the park and investing another $70 million over the term of the lease. All rides were slated to reopen with the exception of Grease Lightning, which was too costly to repair and reopen. The company also planned to add a $15 million roller coaster, install three new rides, and double the size of the Hurricane Water Park. The planned expansion would be the largest in park's history. On, in January of 2013, the Kentucky Fair Board granted preliminary approval for the lease and the Kentucky Tourism Development Finance Authority, the KT. DFA approved government incentives in support of reopening the park, placing Ed Hart and his investors in charge of park operations. The scheduled opening date was announced as May 24, 2014. On March 25th, Hart specified it would take more money than previously anticipated to rebuild and expand the park. The investment plan previously approved under the terms of lease consisted of $20 million in partner equity and 25 million in borrowed money. The city plan to provide subsidies and the tax incentives up to 200,000 per year for the first five years and 100,000 per year for the following five years. Hart was able to secure 28.5 million in financing and proprietors would be under contract obligation to invest at least 1 million per year on park upgrades. On April 10th, the KTDFA approved up to 10 million in sales tax rebates over the next 10 years for Kentucky Kingdom. Over the next six years that Ed Hart would operate the park, the water park would be expanded, Lightning Run, Storm Chaser, and Kentucky Flyer would be added as ground-up coasters at the park. Also, T2 would change names to T3 after being rehabilitated, and Thunder Run would receive a retract for the 2014 and 2020 season. There was a rumored RMC wrapper that was possibly coming in the 2021 season, but it looks like that plan was scrapped. Rumors are that Ed Hart started looking for a new owner in 2018. This rumor has not been confirmed. What has been confirmed from the press conference that was held on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2021, and according to Ed Hart, is that many national operators were looking at Kentucky Kingdom, but he reached out to Hershen Family Entertainment because he felt like they were the right company who could best take over the park. Also on the day, it was announced after numerous teasers from Kentucky Kingdom social media that Hershen Entertainment, who owns a variety of parks and attractions all over the country, but most commonly talked about being Silver Dollar City and Dollywood, would be taking over operations for the park. In this video, we will talk about the strengths and weaknesses of the park and what we will most likely see over the next few years from Hershen. Before we start, please hit that subscribe button and like button so more people are able to see and view the video. Let's get started. 
Currently for a small park, Kentucky Kingdom has a diverse coaster lineup. Currently you have Thunder Run, which is a good family wooden coaster that has been open at the park since 1990. This coaster was retracked before the start of the 2020 season and offers a smoother ride experience now. Then you have T3, which originally was called T2 and has the same layout, but new train since its original opening in 1995. This coaster is a rough Vacoma SLC, and most people and enthusiasts that I've spoken to will ride this coaster once, and that's about it for them. I can see this coaster being the most likely to be removed by Hershen due to being so unpopular, and plus, it would open up space for either a new coaster or water park expansion. Going over to Roller Skater, which opened in 1994, is a good family roller coaster. I can't see Hershen removing this coaster, but maybe we'll add new trains with a new theme. I'll go over theming in a bit. Then when Ed Hart took the park back over, first Lightning Run was added. Lightning Run is a Chance Hyper GTX coaster that was added in 2014 to the coaster's lineup. This coaster has great airtime and a great layout. It's definitely a park visitor favorite since it always has a line. It's also one of our favorite coasters in the park. In 2016, the park's first RMC was added with Storm Chaser opening to the public. This coaster is a compact model that has two inversions and tons of force and airtime. In my opinion, if this coaster had more signage showing people where this coaster was, you could see a larger line and more hype about it. This coaster has remained a favorite by enthusiasts, but almost never has a line due to its location. I can see signage being added to this area to help lead pizzers in the direction of this coaster. In 2019, Kentucky Flyer would open at the park, which is a good ground up gravity group family coaster. It only has a 40 inch height requirement, meaning that almost anyone could ride the coaster, offering a one of a kind family coaster experience. This coaster has great theming, so I believe Hershen would definitely try to keep the same type of theming with this coaster. For future additions, I could definitely see Hershen partnering maybe in the future, in the next three years with B&M, or maybe putting in a new age Vacoma. Both would offer new experience and be able to handle a good amount of passenger traffic. Also, Hershen could easily theme these coasters. However, this land is a big obstacle, but I could see a compact wing or dive coaster for B&M going into the park. The park definitely needs something to attract more families to the park since that is what Hershen prides itself on doing with their other parks. The water park. This is the area that Kentucky Kingdom has heavily excelled at. It's called Hurricane Bay and it has a huge assortment of different water slides, drop slides, and a wave pool and a water coaster. I wish I could come out and say this area is needing more investment, but this is the area that seems the investment has heavily paid off. Of course, I can see more theming in this area to further attract what appears to be their most visited part of the park, their water park. Kentucky Kingdom does have a good assortment of flat rides and also water rides that are in its dry park. However, at this current time, it doesn't really match the theming of what Hershen would probably want to incorporate. I can see them retheming the kids' ride area and also a county fair section of the park, kind of like their parks at Dollywood and Silver Dollar City. While the dry park area of the Kentucky Kingdom has a good assortment of flat rides, their theming is all over the place. It's kind of a mix of whatever they could find and throw into the park. Hershen Entertainment has already said their design team is on site and looking at themes to change and work around. I could see the flat rides being the first as such to incorporate this new look. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I would like to see some sort of dark ride being incorporated in their flat ride lineup. Dollywood and Silver Dollar City have a good assortment of dark rides. Kentucky Kingdom offered many food options before Hershen took over the operations of the park. From the snacks to the main food options, Kentucky Kingdom had one of the best assortment of good tasting food options I'd ever seen. From their regular operating days to the Halloween event, you could find food for anyone, which I was extremely grateful for due to the fact that amusement parks, a lot of the time, all the food tastes exactly the same. So because of this, I see Hershen, of course, putting their good taste into this, and you'll see more food options, I believe, and some of the current food options stay. We also, as announced, will see the addition of cinnamon bread coming to Kentucky Kingdom, which is good news for people that don't want to travel all the way to Dollywood to grab some. Now let's go ahead and look at the drink option. Well, this area I only speak of because of numerous discussions relating to this topic. I am speaking of both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. First, the current soda operator is Pepsi. As you know, Kentucky Kingdom had an all-day refill option. There are numerous stations set up all over the place, making it different from the self-service Oasis locations at Holiday World. I see this changing to Coca-Cola since Hershen uses Coca-Cola products in their other parks. Also, the other discussion was, will the beer garden stay? The other parks do not offer this option in the Hershen chain, so it was rumored this would be gone. However, this is not the case, and actually Hershen announced 
very recently here that they will be expanding and improving on their current lineup of beer and also liquor options which to me was a big surprise but made some people happy to see that some things with the park would remain and stay the same. Well, Kentucky Kingdom has hosted a variety of roller coaster enthusiast events in the recent last year event called Keys of the Kingdom. Also in 2019, Hollow Scream returned to the park and was a success. Other than that, nothing else really exists in terms of special events. Look for this area to change dramatically. Extended season was announced and most likely to be festivals, Halloween events, and Christmas events. This would help draw more interest in Kentucky Kingdom and bring more crowds in year round. Let's start off first with parking. This has always been an issue at Kentucky Kingdom. In my opinion, Hershey needs to figure out a way to separate their parking from the fairground parking. It's a very confusing setup and could be the reason why people choose not to come here. However, there looks to be additional new parking that was recently paved in the parking lot next to the Kentucky Flyer. The question is, how will this new lot be utilized? Moving over to land. This has always been a big obstacle for whoever operates the park. We call Hershen the park operator because they'll basically run and own the rides and the land for the most part, but the Kentucky State Fair owns the land underneath. It's a complicated situation that has led many people to second guess who's running the park. There isn't much room around the park, but maybe open parcels that are available along with allowing additional parking areas to be taken over by Hershen being a possibility as well. This is a very complicated area and I'm interested to see what Hershen does with this issue over the next so many years that they operate the park. Finally, hours. We can only hope the hours are extended and more night closings are coming. This will allow for people to enjoy the dry park, especially in the hot summer days. The only thing that would need to change on the front is more lighting to allow for such a thing. I know one of the main issues a couple years ago during the Halloween events was a lack of lighting throughout the park. I know the hours before Hershen came along offered early evening closings and a lot of people would prefer some late night closing so they could ride some of their roller coasters at night and basically enjoy the water park during the day. With all these different areas being broken down, what's your opinion? We feel like Hershen will change some things so that the park is more attractive while keeping some of the nostalgia and charm that the park has had for years. We understand many people might be nervous on what will come after a failure of Six Flags last time, but Ed Hart ensured us that he picked someone who would be great for the park. Hershen owns Wild Adventures Park in Valdosta, Georgia, and this park isn't given the type of investment that Dollywood and Silver Dollar City get. Many people worry Hershen will run Kentucky Kingdom like they do this park, but I don't believe this to be the case. Wild Adventures is in between Atlanta and Orlando. Most people will probably skip over this park given that it's only roughly two hours and 50 minutes for most Orlando theme parks to include Universal and Walt Disney World. What Hershen needs to figure out is how to grab more people from Indianapolis and Cincinnati. Most of these two areas either go to Indiana Beach, Holiday World, or Kings Island. It's challenging, but showcasing a new look and feel for the park could do it wonders. Unfortunately, some people still believe this park was run by Six Flags. The future is bright for this park, and as a fan of Kentucky Kingdom, you should be excited on what's to come with Hershen running the park. We will revisit this video in three years after seeing what Hershen has done. We hope you've enjoyed this video and please subscribe for more content from Midwest Coaster fans. With that being said, thanks again for watching and until next time.